psychrometrics miscellaneous, this, uh, I don't always know how to apply the sensible heat ratio. How would I have known that simply reheating back to the SHR slope would still satisfy the room load? Refer to the second page of my understanding of the system travel path. Also, what does the sensible heat ratio actually provide me? Is it the theoretical travel path for cooling the room load? I presume the pink dashed line doesn't match the slope of the SHR because the actual system incurs losses. Really good question about a common problem that comes up. I'm actually gonna read this problem out and then I'm gonna jump over to the really nice uh, drawing that you did on the psychrometric chart. We'll spend a couple of minutes on this. So the question is, a room is maintained at 75 degrees and 50% RH. The room sensible heat ratio is 0.66. The apparatus dew point is 38 degrees. The air conditioning unit discharge air temperature is 52 degrees dry bulb, 51 degrees wet bulb. If 10,000 CFM is needed to satisfy the design room cooling load, the reheat required in BTUs per hour at design conditions is most nearly what? And uh, the solution, they have us draw the sensible heat ratio line and um, also a line from the room condition to the supply condition. And uh, it's the reheat that we're being asked to quantify. And they end up using 1.08 CFM delta T to find out what that quantity of reheat is. But the question here is like, how am I supposed to know that uh, the reheat is the distance between the discharge air temperature point and the SHR line? And Let's go to the picture to kind of answer that. It's probably the best way. And maybe I can even darken some of the lines that you drew here. Did a nice job showing this. But let's get some darker colors. I'll go with a dark green right over your green. So this line is the sensible heat ratio line. And then the pink, do we have pink? Look at that, gotta love zoom. Is a line con connecting one to two, which is the room condition to the discharge condition. By the way, I think what's a little bit confusing about the way this question is worded is just the fact that they said, can I go to the next? The fact that they said the air conditioning unit discharge air temperature is 5251 and then there's reheat. So I think that alone is a little bit confusing because from my perspective, everything should be in the unit. So you have to be really clear that this is the discharge air temperature off the coil, the cooling coil, which is cooling the air and stripping it of moisture. And then it's going to go over uh, a heating coil, which is downstream of the cooling coil to perform this reheat. And I guess the way they're performing this, it's not totally clear in the problem statement, but it's doing that cooling process, cooling and drying. And then as a second step, it's getting the reheat. And maybe that's a later step in the same unit. Maybe it's a separate unit. Not, not totally clear. But what we can say for sure is that there is reheat. So we know, we should know that um, when there's a situation where we need to do some cooling and some drying, um, if that air that we, uh, that we arrive at, that we achieve, is not appropriate for serving the room cooling load, then it's possible we may need to do some reheat. So what are some clues that that might be the case? Well, there, and this comes back to really what's at the heart of your question, which is what is the SHR slope? Um, where, where is your question? What does the sensible heat ratio actually provide me? What is that information really? Well, the protractor, and, and I know a lot of problems don't use the protractor, but it's a great way to get an understanding of what it really means to have a room load. When you think about cause and effect, where to start and where you're going, the room load is the cause. It's the thing that you have to deal with. It's the thing that you can't negotiate. If you're cooling, it's because there's heat and moisture that you're trying to remove. So what is, what is a cooling load? It's a quantity of heat, sensible heat that increases the temperature in the space that needs to be removed. And it's a quantity of moisture that's being added to the space that needs to be removed. So we have to do those two things and we have to do those two things in the proper quantities and they happen with a certain ratio. That's the sensible heat ratio. 
And when we use the protractor, we're determining the slope of a line. So that line, the slope of that line tells us how much sensible heat and how much latent heat. If that line's perfectly horizontal, it's only sensible cooling. There's only sensible heat being produced, so we only have to do sensible cooling. We're just going to move along a horizontal line. If that line is on an angle, then there's some amount of latent cooling. And if that line is steeper, there's more latent cooling per unit. So the sensible heat ratio is going to be lower. And that you can see that on this, right? As you go 0 0.7, 0 0.6, and so on, you get a steeper and steeper line. So when they give you the ADP, they give you a point along the saturation curve, which is 38 degrees, and you'll notice that sensible heat ratio points to that ADP. Now, it would be a, wonderf a wonderful luxury as an operator if you were able to run the cooling coil at that temperature, 38 degrees. You'd have to probably make 33, 34 degree chilled water and flow it through that coil and make the outer surface temperature of that coil 38 degrees. And in such a case, you could go ahead and make discharge air that's somewhere along that green line, maybe all the way down in the saturation curve. So then the discharge condition could be something like 38 degrees dry bulb and 38 degrees wet bulb. Not, not very likely for a number of reasons, one being the bypass factor. You're probably not going to get all the way up to the saturation curve. Um, and also you have to have really cold chilled water to do that. But it's not crazy to imagine that you could be somewhere up the line a bit. Maybe you could be uh, somewhere around here, 45, you know, somewhere along here on the green line. What I'm getting at is that if your discharge condition is somewhere on the green line, then you're providing air that's suitable for meeting the, the room sensible heat ratio, the room cooling load exactly as it is. You're meeting it at the right ratio. And then the only question left to answer is how much air do you need? And we can do that a couple of different ways. We can just look at the sensible and do Q equals 1.08 CFM delta T, or we could look at uh, both sensible and latent taken together, and we could do 4.5 CFM delta H and analyze it that way. But in this case, we've been told in the problem statement that it's, um, it's going to have reheat. And we know that the discharge air condition is 52 degrees dry bulb and 51 degrees wet bulb. So that's the end point of your pink line. That's your state two. And that is not on the green line. So what does that mean? Well, we have to provide air. Ultimately, that's on the green line. So we don't have to provide air that's that, that's that cold, right? 51 degrees, 52 degrees dry bulb. That's not strictly required. We can provide more CFM to make up for it. But that air is uh, just the right humidity ratio, right? It's horizontally over, but it's not, it's too cold. So reheating is just the ticket to take us to, to a point that's on the green line, which is required. So the green line is the cause and the ultimate supply condition is the effect. It's the thing that we have to use mechanical systems to create, to produce a suitable supply condition. So if it's coming off, at two, we're gonna reheat it to three, and then we're good to go. Uh, so then that's a really common thing that you'll see as well. You're, you're gonna see situations where um, it's gonna be somewhere off to the left, and then the, the way to deal with that is to reheat, which is sensible horizontal over to the right. The other thing that I just wanna mention, and I don't wanna confuse the issue, but because of the way you kind of phrase this as, you know, what does this slope really mean? What is the SHR telling me? Um, I, I want to point out that whenever we draw these lines, we're not really drawing a true air conditioning process. We are drawing a theoretical process, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's very useful, and it allows us to solve many problems. But we should realize that the way moisture is actually removed from conditioned air, there's no such thing as like just stripping moisture out of it unless you're using like, well, <laughs> Let me not go there. Um, the way it actually happens in air conditioning is that the coil is cold and the air is cooled sensibly, which means it moves horizontally to the left until it hits the saturation curve. And then, and only then, when it's 100% saturated, it continues and slides down the saturation curve, releasing that water vapor 
because it's it can't hold it at a lower temperature so it has no choice but to condense out and uh then you end up at some point along the saturation curve and if if it's not directly on the saturation curve that's probably because there's a little bit of bypass so there's a number of things going on behind the scene that we're already glossing over we just say hey we're at some state too. It's 52 degrees dry bulb, 51 degrees wet bulb. That's what's coming off the coil. That's the discharge condition. And now we're going to reheat it because we need to supply something along the green line. And the last thing I'll say here, uh, presume the pink dashed line doesn't match the slope of the SHR because the system incurs losses. Not necessarily, uh, although certainly potentially, but the reason the pink line doesn't match the green line is... Uh, just because that's not the way the this system was designed. Again, you could have selected a unit uh, with uh, and and planned to serve it with 38 degree chilled water or colder to make a 38 degree ADP really and uh, put something out of, out on the green line. But for whatever reason, the equipment selected or the temperature that chilled water was available, that was not the approach used, and that's not uncommon. So the approach used was to, plot, um, to supply something that's warmer, 52 degrees, um, but sufficiently dry and to use reheat. So a uh, little bit more energy intensive there. Always great to avoid reheat when you can. There's a few different strategies for doing that, but uh, this is a very common strategy that is used, unfortunately, um, because it's usually just like an electric reheat. And... Uh, if you really need to control the temperature and the humidity, this is one way of doing that. And it's a common exam question, so it's good to know about.